My daughter needed a liver transplant, so my wife and I got tested. But when the doctor pulled me aside and said, you're not her biological father, everything fell apart. Now, I've secretly tested all five of my kids, and the results have left me wondering what I can do. My daughter was sick in the hospital, which ultimately led to testing after testing, confirming something that I did not want to admit. So what did I do? I went ahead and got paternity tests for all of my children, and the results were absolutely shocking. I'm a 44-year-old male, and I've been married to my wife, Judith, for 22 years. We got married when I was 22, and she was 20. We were childhood sweethearts, and we dated all through middle school and high school. We have five children and have been living happily for the past 22 years. I was born into a very poor family, and Judith was born into an upper middle class background. Her family was not happy with her decision to marry me and was very vocal about the fact that they did not believe I could provide her with a comfortable life. Of course, she ignored them and married me anyway, but I've had to work very hard during our marriage to prove them wrong and give her the life that she deserves. She always said that she didn't expect much and that she knew what she was getting into when she accepted my proposal, but I still wanted to give her everything I possibly could. During the first 10 years of our marriage, I worked myself to the bone to feed our family as it kept getting bigger and bigger. With each new baby, I had to take on more and more hours. At the height of it, when we had five children under 10, I was working 80-hour weeks, 13 hours a day, 6 days a week. I was exhausted and missed out on a lot of being a father. I never got to see any of my children's first words, their first steps, or any of their milestones, really, the kids barely knew me because I was gone most of the day, and when I got home, I was just too tired to play with them. I barely knew those kids, and it hurt that, in order to keep my family off the streets, I had to sacrifice my best years with them. Still, I gritted my teeth and bore it as the man of the house. My wife and I did talk about the possibility of her getting a part-time job, you know, to help with all the expenses once the kids were old enough to go to daycare, but she said that she could not be away from them for so long. Unfortunately, even after everything I sacrificed to make sure that my kids were safe and my wife was happy, her family did not ease up on me. The criticism just pivoted from me being a poor, no good loser who could never give her the life she wanted to me being a workaholic with no interest in my own children. It took a lot of willpower to keep myself going back then, but I managed it. I'd been working at a small welding company for all those years, and about 12 years into our marriage, my boss pulled me aside. He was retiring early at 60 because of ill health, I think they found a tumor in his brain or something. He decided that he was going to leave the company to me. I was absolutely shocked. Of course, I had no experience with business or running a company or even being in charge of anybody. I had no idea why he chose me to take his life's work, but when I asked, he just said that he'd never seen anybody work as hard as I do. Obviously, I was flattered, but I was nervous too. I was a welder, and I'd never been promoted in all the years I'd been working there. I started as an apprentice at 17, and now, at 34, I was being handed the keys to the castle. Honestly, I did consider turning it down. It was a huge undertaking, and I wasn't sure that I was the man for the job. Thankfully, my wife convinced me to give it a go just for a couple of months on a trial basis and see if I liked it. Well, it turns out I did like it, I'll admit it was strange swapping my work clothes for a suit and even stranger having to adjust to the responsibilities, but as it turns out, I have a knack for management. Thanks to my old boss, the company was booming in business, and people trusted him. If he said I was good at my job, then they believed him. This really helped me navigate the growing pains of starting my own business. My hours were still crazy high those first few months, just while I was finding my feet and gaining the respect of all my colleagues as their new boss. After that, though, my hours were about halved, and my pay was much higher too. My wife was ecstatic about the whole thing, and our oldest was nine. I managed to make up for all the years I'd lost. I had an amazing relationship with all my children now, and the ones old enough to remember my absence in their youth have forgiven me. It took a lot of work and a lot of sucking up, but our family was happier than ever. After a few years, I really got the hang of owning a business, and I'm happy to say that we've expanded the company and now have workspaces in three different states. Everything was going smoothly, and honestly, I should have known that it was too good to be true. Well, I thought the past few years of happiness and comfort were just the universe making up for the hard times during the first 12 years of our marriage. Unfortunately, everything turned on its head a few months ago when my daughter got sick. She's 17, and she'd been feeling unwell for a while, but we didn't think it was anything serious. She always had a weak immune system, so we thought that she'd just gotten her yearly flu or something. But when she was still feeling awful after a few months, we brought her in for a checkup just to make sure everything was fine. Unfortunately, everything was not fine. Now, our girl is in chronic liver failure. She's been on dialysis, but short of a transplant, there are no real options. A few weeks ago, before her condition got so bad, the doctors told my wife that, well, there was a solution they'd like to try, which was a plasma transfusion. I don't know much about this medical stuff, I've never heard any of the terminology, nor has Judith, but of course, we agreed to try. The issue was that our girl was a very rare blood type. We'd always known she was a rare blood type, but you never think something like this is going to happen, so we didn't give it much thought. The doctor said that the chance of a match in familial relationships is high, so both my wife and I agreed to donate and have our plasma tested. My wife seemed a little hesitant at first, but after some pushing from both me and the doctor, she agreed. So, we'd been given hope. I was praying day and night, though I'm not really a religious man. Even if the plasma treatment did not work, 
I was sure that if we were a match, I'd be able to donate a part of my liver anyway. I felt like there was finally light at the end of this tunnel, and I was hopeful again that my baby girl would be able to survive this. Well, that did not turn out to be the case. The doctor arranged a meeting with us and told us that neither of us were a match. He seemed to be giving my wife strange looks, which I didn't understand at all. She was blushing, but I was too caught up in the disappointment over the failure to pay much attention to it. Later on in the day, I was staying with my daughter in the hospital, sitting by her bed while my wife went home to make dinner for the rest of the kids, who have mostly been staying with their cousin who lives across the street and loves the children. The doctor came into my room and pulled me aside while my daughter was asleep. He told me something, my girl, my baby girl, she's not my daughter. I'm not her biological father. I thought that the doctor was kidding for a minute, and I was just about ready to deck him in the face for joking at a time like this, but then I thought about the way my wife was against the idea of testing my blood to see if I was a match, and everything sort of fell into place. I was reeling, honestly. At first, my daughter was dying in front of me, growing weaker by the day while I couldn't do a thing for her, but on top of that, she wasn't even mine. I was devastated. The doctor had to sit me down and get me a glass of water. I think I looked like I was going to faint or something. Once I calmed down enough to hear what he was saying to me, he had the nerve to ask me not to tell my wife that I knew. Apparently, it breaches some sort of doctor-patient confidentiality, and he could lose his license for telling me. I didn't even bother answering him, and he left the room pretty soon after. I think he could have waited there for hours, I wouldn't have known how long he'd been there. My head was in a fog. I had no clue what was going on around me. My daughter woke up eventually, and I had to take care of her, wipe the sweat off her head, brush her hair, and feed her from her hand, all while the inside of my head was going crazy. Eventually, my wife came back to take over, and I managed to go home and get some sleep. Things weren't any easier when I woke up, though. I made breakfast for the rest of my kids and drove the younger ones to school, all while, in my head, I was looking over their faces, searching for any resemblance to me. The thing is, all my kids take after me, even my girl in the hospital. She looks exactly like my grandmother, right down to the shape of her nose. So how could she not be mine? It made no sense. It was difficult pretending that there was nothing wrong with me after that, though thankfully, everybody seemed to take my distance as shock over what was happening to my daughter. I was barely eating, barely speaking. Thankfully, I left my company in the hands of one of my best workers, so I didn't have to worry about that at least. You best believe I spent hours googling. Part 2 I ended up on this website, and I reckon I spent 12 hours straight reading similar stories from men who had the same experience as me. The resounding advice on every single one of these posts, from thousands of people who replied, was to get a paternity test. I had no idea how to go about getting one of those, but again, after some searching around online, I found a place that does it. I bought one of those little kits with the little baggies. I didn't want to test my daughter again, the doctor had told me that the margin of error on these tests was very slim, especially when done in a controlled environment by professionals. I also didn't want to bother her, not when she needs her strength right now. My other kids have been going through some tests recently too, just for the doctors to clarify that whatever it is making my daughter sick isn't hereditary, so it wasn't difficult convincing my youngest son to let me take a swab inside of his cheek. He's a sport, and I think he enjoyed the attention anyway. I considered asking him not to tell his mother, but I knew that would not be a good idea. Once you tell a kid not to do something, they're gonna do it, so I didn't even bother. If I'd made a big deal out of it, it would be stuck in his head. As it is, it's just another test in a long line of them. I sent off the swab and waited. It took about a week to get the results back, and I don't think I've ever waited with such bated breath in my entire life. It was the most difficult week of my life. The entire time, I could not figure out what exactly the results were that I actually wanted to come from this. Obviously, I wanted my son to be mine, there's no question, but if he is, I'll always be stuck wondering if my daughter is the only one who's not mine or if my youngest twins are the only ones who are. Well, the results came back. He's not mine. He's not my son. That's three of my children who have been confirmed not to be mine. There's no point in testing the second youngest, he's the identical twin of the one I tested, and if one isn't mine, neither are the other. The weird thing is, though, we are related, we share about 4% of DNA. I did some more googling, and it turns out that the most probable familial tie I have with those kids is that we're second cousins. I've tested the other two kids in the past two weeks, and the results were the exact same. The chance of me being their father is slim to none, and I'm absolutely devastated. I don't know what to think, not one of these kids who I've raised are my own in the past 22 years. I'm not an idiot, I know what it means that I'm most likely their second cousin. My wife has long since had a close relationship with my own cousin, who lives across the street. I would have been worried about it if I hadn't trusted her so much. I guess it would also explain the family resemblance between them and me, my daughter looking like my grandmother makes sense when she was always my cousin's grandmother. I don't even know how to refer to my kids anymore. I call them my sons, my daughters, my kids, but I know that's not true. I don't want to tell my wife that I know, it would cause so much stress in the family, and I'm not sure that we can handle much more right now. The idea of referring to these kids by their names is ludicrous because I still feel like their father. Every time they call me dad, it's like I'm stabbed in the chest, and I can barely look my wife in the eyes. I suppose the timing of my daughter's illness is a good thing, 
though I feel like a monster for saying it. My wife probably thinks that I'm just receding into myself as a coping mechanism when, in reality, I just can't look her in the eyes knowing what she did. Sharing a room with her is torture. I know the kids need emotional support right now, but I just don't think I can give it to them. Every time I look at their faces, see their family noses, it hurts me even more. Knowing that they spend every day I'm at the hospital at my cousin's house is even worse. I always liked that they had a close relationship with him, and I really appreciated the love he has for them. I figured because he didn't have any kids of his own, he liked taking on the sort of uncle role in their life. I even helped him put in a good word with the homeowners association in the neighborhood. I was excited for him to be close by. We often went out fishing or enjoyed a couple of beers on the back porch. I never would have thought that he would betray me like this. I know that it probably seems like I'm jumping the gun and assuming that he's the biological father to all five of my children, but I can't explain how close he and my wife are. When I was working my butt off for 16 hours a day, breaking my back to provide for the family, he was the one my wife would call to fix a broken cupboard or clean the gutters. I was always just glad that she wasn't resentful of my hours, so I didn't pay attention to just how close they were. My cousin's the same age as my wife, and they were friends in high school. Heck, he's the one who introduced us. All of these factors sort of came together in my head, and I guess I developed a little bit of a blind spot where he was concerned. But you best believe that blind spot is gone now. I don't want to confront either of them, honestly. I'm too exhausted for that right now. I can barely look at any of the kids I live with, my kids, without seeing my cousin's chin or his big old ears. My wife has been reaching out for comfort during my daughter's illness, but all I can do is push her away. I know she's beginning to resent me for not being there for her, but I just can't bring myself to pretend that everything's alright. The kids are suffering, I'm suffering, my wife's suffering, and my daughter, well, she's dying. I don't even know how to begin to fix this situation when I can barely eat, and every face in my own home feels like a stranger. Originally, I felt guilt for not trusting my wife. I felt as if the first test must have been a fluke of some kind, and I felt like a terrible husband for even considering paternity tests on the four children. But I pushed through that guilt, and look where it got me. I'm a father of five with no kids of my own. Obviously, I'm writing this on a burner account. I don't want my wife to know that I found out our secret until I figure out what I'm going to do. I don't feel like I can just go on with my life the way I've been, not after this devastating news. I'm just absolutely heartbroken right now. Any advice would be much appreciated. Update 1, it's been two weeks now. I've thought long and hard about my options, and it seems to me as if only one option is really available, and that's to leave. A lot of you guys on here have advised me to stay, just pretend that I have no idea about my wife's infidelity. But more of you have told me to get the heck out of there. I'm leaning heavily towards the second option. I feel like a dirtbag, like I'm leaving my wife and kids defenseless. My wife never worked a day in her life. I have no idea how she's going to support herself and the children, but at this point, I guess you could say it's just not my problem. I've scheduled an appointment with a divorce attorney tomorrow. I'm going to sign the papers, and I've done some research, and there's a guy in our state who you can pay to convince your wife to sign the papers. Since I was dirt poor when we got married, her parents insisted that we sign a prenup. So fortunately, every cent I've earned will still be mine. They thought that I'd want to steal their ugly mansion or something. I've been pretending like everything's normal. My cousin came by yesterday while my wife was at the hospital, and it took every ounce of restraint in me not to punch this guy square in the face. The youngest sat in his lap while he pretended to be sympathetic to my situation, and all I could see were the similarities between both of them. Well, it broke my heart all over again, and I'm leaving. I'm leaving for good. I can't stay in this house anymore knowing that it's where I raised another man's child, and, I'm out of here. Judith can take her time and raise a fuss all she likes, but I won't be here to see it. I'm leaving the country. I know it sounds drastic, I know, but leaving the state just doesn't feel like it would put enough distance between us. I've actually found a place in Thailand. It's cheap living there, and I reckon I could live comfortably on the money I've earned without working another day in my life. I always wanted to travel, but with Judith, the kids, and work, I've never left the country. I'm taking this as an opportunity to do all the things I've always wanted to do. I won't be held down anymore by a cheating wife and kids who aren't mine. I know I sound like a callous dude, I know, but it's the only way I've been able to stop myself from completely breaking down. To be quite honest, I've had to put some real emotional distance between me and my family, and I'm afraid that if I didn't, I'd crawl into bed and never get out again. It might sound like I'm having a midlife crisis, and I know this behavior is pretty typical of that. A man in his 40s leaves his wife and kids to travel the globe, but guys, this is not that. I'd give anything to go back in time and stop the doctor from telling me my wife's secret. I don't care that I would have been made a fool of behind my back by both my own cousin and my wife. I mean, I would have been happy and ignorant. They do say ignorance is bliss. Unfortunately, I can't go back, and this is the only way I can see myself moving forward. I doubt that my decision is going to make me very popular on here, and I agree that leaving while my daughter is so sick is an absolutely terrible thing to do, but I feel that I've got no other choice. I know I'm being disgustingly selfish right now, but I reckon it's the only way I can get through this without becoming a shell of a man. Every time I remember the shine in my wife's eyes when she told me she was pregnant, I feel sick to my stomach and I just about pass out. I can't sustain this, and so I'm doing the worst thing possible. Update 2. Well, hello. I must say it's been a long while since I've updated you on my situation, about 6 months in total. 
I've been really busy settling into my new home, and there's been a lot of legal stuff to deal with, so this website wasn't exactly my first priority. The first thing I'm going to tell you is some good news, my ex-wife's daughter received a liver donation from my cousin, and she's well on the mend. Her body is accepting the liver well, and from what I hear, she's doing absolutely great. I know a lot of people were concerned about that, just as I was, but I didn't want to air her medical history out on here. But there we are. Apparently, my ex-wife had the sudden bright idea to test my cousin's blood against her daughter's, and what do you know, it was a perfect match. I'm glad she's okay, and I've made sure to leave enough money to cover her medical expenses, not that my ex-wife would ever tell you that. She's gone on a bit of a hate campaign against me on Facebook and social media, I'm afraid. Honestly, I don't think there's anyone within a five-mile radius of her who doesn't know I've left her. She's been airing out our dirty laundry like absolutely crazy. I tried to be discreet, and she still doesn't know my exact reasons for leaving her. She seems to think it's because her daughter got sick, and I couldn't hack it. I've been branded a deadbeat dad and many more colorful monikers. It doesn't bother me, I know the truth. I did have a little too much to drink last night, though, and I'd had enough of her airing our business online. I've been getting Facebook messages from just about every member of her extended family, and I just hit a wall. I'm not proud of it, but in her latest tirade, I simply commented some screenshots of the paternity test results. She hasn't posted anything since then, and many of my own family members are piling on her in the comments. I've asked them privately to stop, though, I don't need her to be harassed. I didn't even want to share the paternity test results. I felt it would be unfair for the kids, for everyone in town to find out about their real father. But hey, it's out there now. It would be just plain stupid to post the pictures and then take them down mere hours later once everybody's already seen them and screenshotted them. It would just be me clinging to the higher ground, which I don't want to do. Thankfully, I had enough foresight to throw out my old SIM card and get a new number once I got here in Thailand, so there's only one way of contacting me, and it's through Facebook. I deliberately only check it every few days. None of the kids have reached out to me, which hurts, but I also know that I deserve it. I also don't know if I would be able to stay strong if they called me dad. My resolve would be hanging on by a string, and I know that. It took me a long time to settle down here. I was living out of my suitcase in a hotel for a couple of months, but I found a nice little place now. I'm right beside the beach and only an hour or two outside of Bangkok. It's nice here. Of course, I miss my family. I miss the kids most of all, but I'll admit that sometimes I get lonely out here and think of my ex-wife. I miss waking up beside her, seeing her smile at me when she opens her eyes for the first time. I had to pay an arm and a leg to get settled out here, though I won't lie, the visa wasn't crazy expensive, but it cost a lot to transfer my assets to a Thai bank account. Even with the cost of living being cheap here, I'll admit that it took me a while to get used to the currency. Well, I got swindled a couple of times, so I feel like that's a rite of passage for expats everywhere. I transferred the business over to the guy who was taking care of things while my ex's daughter was sick, and now I'm a free man. There's a guy who lives in my building who used to live in the States, so we go out sometimes. It's lonely, I won't lie, but it's better than living a lie. I golf, I eat, I swim in the ocean, I find ways to fill my time. You guys will probably have noticed that I've stopped referring to the kids as mine, and that was a deliberate choice. It doesn't seem right to continue to claim them, not after I pretty much up and abandoned them. They might still think of me as their father, but I've worked hard to change my thinking around from that. It isn't easy, it hurts, and I'm still slipping up sometimes, but I'm doing my best out here. I sometimes go on my ex-wife's Facebook page just to see all the pictures that she's posted of the kids, and well, I still get choked up. The youngest two are growing up so fast, I barely recognize them. In other news, my ex-wife and my cousin are now in a public relationship. They seem very lovey-dovey, and as far as I can tell, he's moved into the house I bought. I took my name off the deed before I left, it didn't seem fair to disrupt the kids' lives any more than I have, and forcing them all to move out of the house they grew up in just seemed too mean-spirited. I know it seems like I'm really picking and choosing my morals here, and really, I agree that I am. But I'm doing the best I can. I don't want to upset the children any more than necessary. I know, I know. A lot of you guys will say that losing their father is a much worse situation than having to leave their childhood home, and I do agree, but one of those things I had to do for my own sanity is leave. I'll probably leave this post alone for a while, honestly. I think the resounding answer is that yes, I am the a-hole, not for testing my kids' parenthood but for completely abandoning them because of their mother's infidelity, which wasn't a fault of their own whatsoever. Thank you, everybody, for the help, support, comments, and heck, even all the hate.